Hi there, as the price of Bitcoin has crept above $57,000 this week, the Bank of England Deputy Governor has called for urgent regulation of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. And just before I start, my, my name is Charles Kelly. I, I'm the author of the book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. And I've, I've produced over 250 free podcasts for education purposes. I'm not a financial advisor, but I put these out on, on, on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and, and like the post to get it out to more people. Similar thing on, on whether you're looking at this on Facebook or you might be listening on iTunes or Stitcher or one of the other podcast pla platforms on, on audio only. So thanks for listening and please do like and share the content. But the price of Bitcoin climbed to $57,000 uh, this, this week. And it had dropped back, as, as you know, and it peaked at 60. And some, some analysts see this as uh, maybe a last sort of rally for Bitcoin before it falls again. But, you know, I'm not a Bitcoin uh, specialist in, in, as such. But I'm going to talk about Bitcoin today because the Deputy Governor of the Bank of England, Sir John uh, Cunliffe, said that cryptocurrencies need regulation as a matter of urgencies. Now, he said they don't, at the moment, pose a risk to the financial stability of, of the markets in general. Uh, but there are very what he called very good reasons to, to think that this might not be the case for, for much longer. So they're obviously looking into this. This is not only the, 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 uh, the Bank of England, but, but also the Federal Reserve. And what he said is that the future collapse of the price of, of cryptocurrencies could spread through the markets. Now, he warned that uh, a severe fall in the value of a crypto asset, for example, to zero, could force investors who have taken on debt with brokers to, to have to find the cash or, or sell other assets in, in effect to pay for them. And sometimes you see this if cryptocurrency falls, then markets can drip, drop suddenly. Even the price of gold can drop because maybe they're selling off assets in gold and other, other assets like shares to, to pay the margin calls from the brokers. So when we say margin calls, basically they borrowed uh, with the brokers to buy cryptocurrency on the speculation that it, it, it's going to go up in value. And then if it dropped down, they've lost, there's no asset there. The, 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 the loan is, is secured on the asset. And if the asset's gone, the brokers said, well, we need our money, otherwise we're going to bankrupt you. And, and that's when they might have to sell other assets. In some cases, it could you know, push people into, into bankruptcy. And he, he said there's, there's a possibility of contagion. A large cryptocurrency, uh, falling cryptocurrency's values could affect the you know, investor risk and sentiment more broadly, causing investors to sell other assets that are judged to be risky or perceived to have uh, a similar base to that. So what he's saying is that uh, this could spread through through the market if, if cryptos fell. And this is not just a matter of people saying, well, you know, I've put a few hundred dollars into crypto, I've lost it, you know, fair enough. Th this is where people are investing big into cryptos and, and, and then that could be a problem for the, for the whole market. As one thing goes down, it could come down like a domino effect. Now, in the past year, crypto assets have grown uh, around 200% in value from just under uh, 800 billion or 580 billion pounds to 2 trillion, 2.3 trillion dollars, nearly 2 trillion pounds. So it's, we're not talking about small beer here. And there are thousands of these cryptocurrencies now. And, and who knows what which one to invest in. Bitcoin is the one that everybody knows, the one that uh, people remember from, from years ago when you could have bought a Bitcoin for you know, a few dollars and now they're $57,000 and you think, why didn't I get into that? I should have been in there. Um, you know, but th that's past. You can't turn back the clock and get into it. So a lot of people then jump on the bandwagon, don't they? Now, this is all right, two trillion is, is relatively small in terms of the global financial assets, which are over, you know, 250 trillion dollars. Uh, but, you know, the, ninth, the, the, the 2008 financial crash was triggered by one sector, and that's the subprime mortgages, mortgage uh, sector, which was only at that time just over one trillion dollars, Sir John has said. So in other words, at that time, subprime mortgages were a sector where they were selling assets which were backed by mortgages lent to people who couldn't pay their mortgages before, known as subprime mortgages. And they were sold as class A assets, which were really like more like junk bonds. So and then when it when uh, people realized this and the market trump crumbled, uh, like if you watch that movie about that, then then you'll you'll know the, the big short 
uh, you'll, you'll, you'll know the story. Um, and that's when everything sort of came down at once and suddenly, you know, even banks were going out of business. And, and he, so in other words, what he's saying is that even a small sector of the, of the economy, like a two trillion sector, or in the case of subprime one trillion, if that goes down, it could have a, a trigger effect on other assets as people sell. And institutions are getting involved in, in cryptos as well. Funds are investing in them. So, you know, who, who knows? Now, most crypto ass assets such as Bitcoin, Ethereum and, and these sorts of things are, are not backed up in the real world by assets or commodities, uh, but strings of computer code. And, and that makes up 95% of the, the $2 trillion in, in crypto. As a result, he said they are volatile. Well, to be fair, Sir John, um, most currencies uh, in, 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 other, in most countries are not backed up by any assets or commodities. They're not backed up by gold anymore. The pound used to say the bearer of this note is entitled to uh, the, the, the value of this note in gold. And that's how currencies kind of started. If you think of fiat currencies backed by gold. And of course, in America in the early 70s, I think 1971, uh, Richard Nixon, old Tricky Dicky, took America off of the gold standard. And, and you, you could argue then that since then that, that currency has, has just gone down and down in value. And, uh, you know, America has suffered a, as a result and perhaps the world has suffered. He, they got away with it because the, the, do, the dollar is the, the, the standard currency of, of the world. Most things are priced in dollars such as oil and, and most other commodities. Uh, so the gold, uh, the, the dollar is known as the reserve currency. So most currencies are not backed by anything. And that, that is probably the, 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 the appeal of, of crypto assets such as Bitcoin um, because they're outside of the main system. Uh, investors in cryptocurrencies see themselves as uh, independent renegades who, who've got their money outside the system because they think the system is going to collapse, uh, that, that all this money printing that's going on is, is going to make the, all the other currencies worth zero and then Bitcoin is going to suddenly come in and become the, the reserve currency. Well, personally, I don't think so. And, and he goes on to say, uh, connections between cryptocurrencies and traditional financial market are also growing as big as investors, uh, hedge funds and banks and, and have become more and more involved. So as I said, banks and hedge funds are getting into this. So what he said is bringing crypto bringing the crypto world effectively within the regulatory perimeter will help ensure that potentially very large investments of the application of this technology to finance can flourish in a sustainable way. That, that is a lot of words to just say they want to regulate it and, and make it safe for people. Um, so look, as, as I said, um, other currencies are not backed up by anything, but at least you know that the government is there behind them. So, uh, if you if you borrow money from the American government, which has never defaulted on on loans or bonds, you you know that 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 money is is going to be there. But Americans are now having to increase the debt ceiling limit in order to meet their commitments, and there's going to be another round of talks uh, coming up in in a couple of months' time because the Republican Party did not want them to do this, and and otherwise they could fail to meet their payments on their bonds, which which are uh, U.S. Treasury bonds, they're called. Um, which is never done before. So it's never defaulted on, on a payment, whereas other countries, you know, South American juntas and that sort of thing have defaulted on, on payments. So what, what America is doing is just printing their way out of problems and perhaps building more problems for themselves down the line. Uh, the UK is apparently printing a billion a day as well and, and getting more involved in, in more spending projects. Um, so this is why people are, are feel that crypto is a bit of a safe haven. You know, for me, um, you know, I, I feel that central banks are, and, and major governments are not going to allow cryptocurrency to, to take over their currency and, and replace it with the currency they control. And it's not even recognised as, as a currency, um, you know, recognised or even taxed as, as a currency. Uh, so they don't recognise it. There's, I think, what was that country, uh, uh, El Salvador or Venezuela, who, who started to recognise uh, crypto, but the, you know their, their currency is worth zero anyway, and they're relying on the dollar. So they're bringing in the, this sort of uh, recognition and trying to get people to use crypto, which are a lot of Bitcoin, which a lot of people are not even happy about. So, so, so there you go. I mean, 
China has also uh, banned crypto trading altogether, it, it, having previously banned uh, crypto mining. This is the process to uh, on computers to, to mine cryptocurrencies. Don't ask me to explain it. Uh, look it up on Google, cryptocurrency mining, uh, and presumably to avoid uh, similar risks as well as any challenge to their own uh, currency, which is now more or less digital anyway. And I think other central banks will be digitizing their their currency uh, as as paper currency is is gradually faded out. I think this has got more to do with controlling us rather than just uh, you know making it easier for, for our lives. But but obviously cash and it costs a lot of money to move around. It costs a lot of money to print. Uh, it can be counterfeited and, and blah blah blah. But then maybe so can digital currency as as well. And you know the Bank of England uh, previously advised that people should only invest money into crypto that they can afford to lose. That was the governor of the Bank of England. And but then you know when you borrow money to buy crypto or any other volatile asset, you know such as a uh, high risk stocks and shares that you expect to go up. Uh, this is pra- practice I would call gambling, not not investing. You're just speculating. You risk losing far more than your original stake, obviously, because you're going to rig- lose your original stake plus what you've borrowed to 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 buy that stake. And you know this happened before the 1929 stock market crash, when people, uh, you know, could, you know, when, when people could could borrow money to buy stocks and shares. So they if they they could borrow two thirds of the value of the, of the shares. So if they, if they, um, you know, if they, if they wanted, uh, you know, $300 worth of shares, they could borrow $200 and, and then that was uh, secured on the shares themselves. And people were, were, it was great. It was going fine. Shares were going up. So people thought, this is easy. I'll, I'll borrow some more and kept piling into the market. And in fact, it got so bad that Joseph Kennedy, the father of um, President Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy, uh, said that when a shoeshine boy was telling him to get in, get into shares, get in, get into stocks and invest in stocks, he saw that as the time to get out. And that's similar things happening in America now. A lot of small investors are, you know, gambling on on shares and and tech shares and this sort of stuff um, through through. Uh, uh, and they're talking on on these uh, discussion boards such as Reddit, and there's a lot of speculation going on with with platforms such as Robinhood. There's there's tr- trading in options, there's trading in cryptos, and it's not only buying cryptos, but people are trading in cryptos. People are uh, borrowing money to buy crypto. So it, it's it's maybe the governor of the Bank of England feels it's kind of getting out of hand. So in the in the 1929 stock market crash, uh, the, the, when the price of shares in some cases dropped by 70%, yes, 70%. You know, the broker then said, right, well, you, the security that you've you put your money into, that we're, we're, we've lent you lent money against, is now worth 70% of what you paid for it. So if you'd, if you'd borrowed uh, $200 to buy $300 worth of shares, and now those $300 worth of shares are, are now only worth, are, are worth less than $200, then the broker says, right, well, we want our money back and, and we're going to sell those shares at whatever we can get for them. And then we want the, the rest of it back from you. So you've lost your, your $300 worth of shares that you thought maybe next week would be $400. And then you've got to find the $200 to pay back to the broker, which you might not have. And that forced thousands of people into bankruptcy. People were jumping off the Empire State Tower uh, because they they just felt that... Um, you know, they'd lost it all. That people were literally jumping off buildings in Wall Street uh, to, because they'd lost everything. They'd lost their houses. They'd lost their business. They, they, it was just gone in in, a, in an instant when the stock market crashed. So these things can happen, and we're seeing history repeating itself. And and in another way, we're seeing uh, history repeat itself uh, because in in a way, just it, it's a bit like you're buying something like crypto. Is it really any use to you other than you think it's going to go up in value? What, what can you do with it? You know, in very few places you can spend cryptocurrencies. So you're buying it so that it will go up in value. You think it will go up in value so you can sell it to the next sucker uh, at a higher price. So you've got out of it and, and, you know, that's what it is. And then the next sucker buys it thinking, well, it will go up in value and he can sell it to another sucker who, who then 
sits on it. And eventually the, the sucker at the end of the food chain loses when it goes down. And, and cryptos have gone up and down by 20% in a day. So how it can be classed as a currency is beyond me. I mean, if I'm, if I'm uh, sending money to somebody and in the morning and by the afternoon, by the time it gets there, you know, 20 minutes later, it's gone down in value. What, what use is that to me? Uh, so, and the other thing, surprisingly, with crypto, you've got to buy it using dollars. So you're, you're buying it using pounds or dollars. And what do they do with that money then? Uh, it's, it's just, to me, it's just, uh, it's, it's pure speculation. And I, I, I can't see all of these cryptocurrencies replacing the main currencies of the main countries in the world. Now, the other thing that's uh, repeating itself is inflation. We could come back, we could be back to 1970s inflation. Inflation in America has reached a 13 year high. I think it's a 35 year high in Germany. And we're, we're seeing higher inflation in the UK. It's supposed to be 4%, but a lot of things are not included in the calculation. Uh, so uh, it, it could, the real rate of, of cost of living rises could be as much as 5% already. And the market is predicting 6% inflation by the end of the year. So this inflation is eating away at your savings that's sitting in your bank or your building society or your deposit-based ISA. Any money that's sitting on deposit is losing value year by year because they're paying you less than the rate of inflation. They're paying you probably a tenth of 1% and inflation is 4%. Well, then you're losing nearly 4% a year on, on the, the buying power of your money. And if you think about it, uh, if you think about you know, when you bought your first house and what it's worth today, and then think if you'd sat on the cash instead of buying that house, what that cash would, would, would do for you today. It certainly wouldn't buy the same house, would it? Uh, so, so that's what you've got to think about. And then, then you might say to yourself, well, how can you invest your money without risk in order to get a higher return and beat inflation? Well, there's not many ways you can do that. There are certain uh, government bonds maybe that might uh, guarantee... Uh, some sort of inflation link for you so that you know if your money buys you x amount today in, in 10 years time we'll give you that money back and it will buy the same as it bought today but that's not going to increase the value of your investment uh, so the answer is really that all investment when I say investment I don't mean putting your money in the bank that's not really an investment you're just holding it on deposit but all investment carries a degree of risk you know if you buy uh you know, even the money on deposit in a way is carrying a risk. If the bank fails, then that your money is gone unless there's a government guarantee, deposit guarantee scheme in place, as there is in the UK. I think it's up to 85,000 in the UK. But anything above that is not guaranteed. So if you've got a million pounds sitting in the bank and the bank fails, you know, you're not going to get it all back. Uh, so but but then governments are, are not likely to let all the major banks fail. So there is a, a, a good backup there but it, but it all carries some degree of risk even putting your money into gold and silver that can fluctuate as well but it's considered less risky than something like like crypto so it all carries a degree of risk even money on deposit i said is, is has a degree of risk uh, and but then if you look at say cryptocurrency that's extremely high risk that's that's speculation that's almost gambling and uh, investing in something like the stock market can also be risky, but most of our pension fund money is invested in the stock market. Uh, but if it's managed well and, and you've got a good fund manager managing it for you, then it's less risky than if you just go and pick a stock because you read about it in the Sunday papers. Uh, but, you know, they can go up and, as well as down. So if you put your money into that stock, you'll get a dividend on the stock, maybe four or five percent. But the value of the stock could go down as well as up. Whereas if your money is on deposit and you're earning, you know, a quarter of a percent, it's, it's a low return, but the value of your money in, on that deposit remains the same. And, you know, investing in a blue chip share, like, I don't know, you invest in shares in, say, Unilever or SmithKline Glaxo or one of the major top FT100 index companies. If you invest in those kind of shares, then they are obviously less risky than investing in smaller companies or startup tech firms, for instance. But that even those shares can still go down in value during a stock market crash or a correction, which has been predicted, by the way, a correction has been predicted by the, the, the Bank of England. And, uh, you know, the, there's a, an inflation risk as well. And, and, and interest rates also are set to go up this year. So when interest rates go up to stop inflation, often that triggers 
a fall in the value of the stock market and it slows down the property market as well. Property, property, people say, what about property then? Uh, property investment can be risky if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, like when you just go into an auction and buy blind without even seeing the property just because you've seen it done on homes under the hammer. That is risky. So, you know, financial education is the key to anything. And I was talking about this yesterday when we were talking about how people are going to fund their pensions and their retirement. Um, the answer is to be financially educated. And keep watching my free podcast. Keep liking and sharing it. Keep watching my YouTube channel as well. And look out for, for regular updates, I guess. Um, you know, people who've made money, millionaires, and, and you know, their habits have been, have been studied for many years. Um, in books like The Science of Getting Rich, Think and Grow Rich, and, and my own book, Yes, Money Can Buy You Happiness. And, and we know that these habits leave track. So try and do things as they do. I run a course called The Smart Money Manager, which is, teaches you how to invest, how to, to, to invest and make money over time. And there's, there's a, a link to free training here today. So you can watch that if you like, to a, a free training webinar that I've put up. And, you know, but the answer is to be educated and not just jump into something because, you know, your friend says, you know, I made some money on Bitcoin or I made some money on this or, you know, I'm, I'm investing in this startup company in South America or, you know, whatever. Um, just just be careful and, you know, always talk to your financial advisor as well. I'm not your financial advisor and always talk to those types of people so that you know what you're doing before you jump into it. So, so there you go. I'll be covering more of this on future podcasts. I can't do it all in one day, but do check out my free training and, and, and my course as well, which you can find out about at the end of the training. Thanks for listening and have, have a great day. Appreciate you uh, listening in and watching and please like and subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye for now.